everybody. Uh, this talk is uh, called Angular Jazz and Cancer for Modern Web Development. Uh, otherwise, uh, how I try to get my app ready for Dancer instead of just using Dancer and how that worked out for me. So I'm um, Josh Levine and I'm um, degree at NRC. <coughs> I've been working with Perl for about 13 years. Um, maybe eight months of that, modern. Uh, so I'm new to Dancer, have a lot to learn, caveat, um, I might be doing things wrong. I work at a company called Endpoint, um, which is US uh, and some international folks. Uh, they're a web consultancy. Um, we specialize in a legacy product called Interchange, which is an e-commerce software. Um, they also do some Postgres consulting. Um, but I work there as a web application developer, front end and back end, and um, I formerly have a company called Perusian, which was uh, started with uh, Mike Hines, who's the author of Many Men, which became Interchange. Um, but we joined with Endpoint in July of this year, so three person shop, now 50 person shop. Um, so it was, a, it was a good transition. So, um, Legacy apps, it's a kind of a fact that we all have to work with them. Um, a lot of us at least have to work with them. Uh, I do. There's, uh, they're kind of unavoidable, but eventually old apps get migrated, or they die, or the last remaining developer dies, and then you're stuck. So it'd be great if we could just migrate everything to Dancer. Um, this isn't always practical, but I at least wanted to consider ways I could do this. So I thought, well, how to prepare for this migration? Um, there's, uh, there was three things I thought about. One is breaking out of the legacy app paradigm. So um, just trying to depend less on legacy app specific code. Um, I wanted to see if I could use modern Perl, um, object oriented Perl, tests. CPAN modules, not trying to reinvent the wheel, um, and then trying to avoid business logic in the front end or scattered throughout my app. So, if I'm going to use modern Perl, I should use tests, right? Oh, uh, let's write some tests. Uh oh, we have a problem. I, uh, I started to realize that if I needed to write tests, I needed to have methods. and. I realized what object-oriented Perl actually meant, that I didn't have it. Um, so up to now, my life as a Perl programmer, I've just been doing scripting, just big huge chunks of code, and my code looked like something from 1990, just a big pile of poo. Um, I couldn't even write tests for my legacy app because it didn't run on the command line. So um, I was in a bad place. I decided to change my ways. I started looking at Moo because Dancer 2 uses Moo. Um, I started trying to write unit tests, trying to write some methods and classes, basically breaking down my problems into smaller problems. And I discovered that doing code this way was really fun. I felt like I was doing something right for a change. Um, but then I realized I couldn't run my tests in my legacy app because as I said, it couldn't be called from the command line. Um, so if my modules were going to depend on legacy app code, I was stuck. So I have to now have to abstract away all the legacy app specific code from my modules and um, move that out. So it's kind of the, the right idea because there's an idea in programming, right, called, that's a principle, the separation of concerns. Um, so this is kind of the idea of you have your app and then you have your web app. And whereas before everything was in my web app, now I want to kind of split that out. So by doing that, I was able to run tests on modules um, in my app. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole here, so I just started to realize, well, I should have just bit the bullet and moved already to Dancer. Um, I had to do some weird hacks to get my legacy app working. But at least it was a start. It was a step in the right direction. And my backend code was just getting more and more ready to move to Dancer eventually. Um, so now, as far as the front end, I had a lot of business logic there that I wanted to clean up. 
And this is an example of one of my legacy app front end pages. It um, was basically embedding all sorts of junk into one page. So I have in brackets here are the legacy app tags, like scratch page title. Then I have embedded Perl inside my HTML page. And um, then there's some tag group on the templates top and bottom. And so the problem with this is, of course, it's just tag soup. And it wouldn't look nice if I tried to open this HTML page on my browser on my local machine uh, without the legacy app running. But you know, let's face it, it doesn't even look nice in the legacy app either. So, trying to think, well, if I'm going to use modern Perl, I should, you know, separate things, right? So, how can I apply this principle to the front end? Well, I had a thought, you know, if I wanted to abstract away the logic from the page, maybe I could use placeholders in my HTML, and then I could pump in my data later and fill those in. And this isn't a new idea, but I was late to the party. So, this is my first attempt. Um, this is using legacy app's built-in placeholder system. So basically, now in, I have a my tag actual list that's wrapping my HTML code, which is using these um, braces that have placeholders. So now I have a placeholder for page title, a placeholder for by phrase, and then there's an, a conditional for as course. And I set that all up when my tag is opened at the top of it. This is better. I think it's moving in the right direction. Um, the problem I felt is that the logic is still baked into the front end web page. And so I said, well, how can I be more ready for answer? And again, it should have just migrated already. <laughs> but I thought, well, maybe I could use template toolkit in my legacy app. But there's problems with that. I have to install yet another module. Uh, I you know, just felt like it's it going to be too hard to do. So. I said, well, what's this AngularJS everybody's talking about? Um, well, what it is, I found, it's a JavaScript framework. Um, basically, you could use it to separate your front end from your back end. So AngularJS displays data on your front page, um, and it uses that. It does that by using JSON feeds that it gets from your back end. So here's a thought. It's almost like your front end is consuming an API. Hmm. So, using Angular, my legacy app front end page server looks something like this. Uh, and I'm not showing the JavaScript right here in this page yet. But we still have our templates that we're pulling in, top and bottom. Um, but now instead of having legacy app specific code, we have uh, HTML attributes, the ng dash. So um, we have the ng dash bind to pull in some Angular. Um, parameters, and these are what Angular will use later to, um, to, to backfill with our data from our JSON feed. So I feel like this is a, it's a little bit cleaner. It's a cleaner way to do things. Of course, I'm still using the legacy backend, but at this point, the legacy backend, all it really has to do is some routing and um, deliver JSON to my front end pages. And it, of course, does authentication and stuff like that. Um, and then this is an example of some of the JavaScript code that I might be using. Um, you, uh, you call Angular, and then you might use a module, or a factory, or a controller, or all three. But um, the point is that they can pull in a JSON feed, and they can set up some scope for your page. Um, in this case, I'd be setting items. Maybe it's an array of hashes. Uh, so, well, what's the difference? I don't, you know, I don't have to use Angular necessarily to do this, but I like it because you could have a random JavaScript developer doing your front end, and you can work on the back end. Um, so it kind of treats your site as an API, which I think is going to be the uh, a good way to work. Um, so. Now the migration of my entire app to Dancer becomes easier, and I decided to give it a whirl with a handful of routes and modules, and it went great. Um, so for my modules that were not the app, or, or that were the app, 
not the web app. I only had a few changes. Here's an original module pared down. But this is a feedback uh, module that basically can accept feedback from users and can list out feedback for an article. Um, uh, in this case, I'm probably doing things wrong, but I'm using a default class called my app to get a custom die and a database handle. Um, this is my first attempt at all this, but it worked in my case. Um, and this is still running in my legacy app. But moving that to, uh, to Dancer got pretty easy. I decided I would use Moo and pull in a role for my database. I could still be doing this wrong, so pointers are welcome. Um, but now instead of having uh, the old one has app die, I just die, and then I have self for my database handle. So that's all it took basically, just changing the database handles and changing how I die um, for my app on. Um, and this is an example of before my, um, my web app module. So <laughs> this is pretty nasty. Um, I basically stole a lot of these ideas from Dancer and uh, didn't do them very well. But this is, an, this is an example of a routing module for my legacy app, which um, sets up slash feedback and then it has a, a win to say if it's slash feedback slash list, do this stuff. Um, there's even more. Uh, bits and posts. It was just a ton of code to do what Dancer gives you really easily. And here's what that is with Dancer. So uh, a whole lot easier uh, prefix that's feedback and then three different routes inside of it. So I felt like Dancer gives me a lot for free. It's a lot simpler. Um, this doesn't show any authentication, but everything else is in here. Um, so for the front end, we have options on how we use Dancer. We can either have Dancer deliver our HTML files, or we can have the web server even deliver them. Because if all I'm using is AngularJS, and maybe it's a single page app, it's just one HTML file, why does that need to be delivered as a Dancer template? I can just have Nginx deliver it, or Apache, or whatever. Um, and I could use uh, JSON web tokens, perhaps, to handle the authentication between front end and back end. Um, I haven't actually done this yet, but it's a thought in my head, so. And in this case, Dancer would just be using the back end. So, in hindsight, I probably should have just moved to Dancer right away. Um, you know, I built my own routing module and legacy app. I basically stole Dancer plugin off Extensible and built my own auth module. It would have just been simpler in hindsight to just go ahead and move. Um, and so, Dancer is better, but in the process I learned something. Um, and that is, you can use any tool incorrectly. <laughs> I, I think you can do Dancer wrong, right? You can write tag soup in anything. You can stuff all your logic in a template toolkit. You could, you know, um, use all in routes. Uh, the idea is that I'm probably doing anything wrong. You know, but you got to start somewhere. Um, but it's better, I think, if. And I uh, got these from MST on uh, IRC. But if your routes contain code specific to the web, the idea of the web app, um, your routes call non-answer modules, the app where your business logic lives, your PBSC, whatever. Um, and then if you return that data in appropriate format, so your module can return a hash. Uh, and then Dancer route and return JSON. It kind of treats your whole backend as if it's an API, because really in the end it is. So lessons that I learned, just you know, get started, break out, my, break out whatever you can into microservice, out of my legacy app to Dancer, um, try to separate my concerns, keep it testable, use object oriented code, and just get started. So, that's the beginning. <laughs> Any uh, questions or comments?